Welcome to your 2022 Mercedes-Benz E350. This is the last of the E-classes for this year for me. I've had the E450, I've had the Coupe, I've had the Cabriolet, and I believe one other one. But I wanted to get into the entry level for the E-class. And I feel bad saying it, but every ladder has a first run. So with the E350, let's do uh, the driving dynamics, take a quick look at the outside, which will be really short. Uh, same thing with the inside, but really it's going to be about driving dynamics as the main focus here. So it's a two liter turbo inline four and it's 255 horse, 273 pound pounds of torque, all through a nine speed automatic transmission. And it does have their formatic all wheel drive. So having driven every other variant or almost every other variant of the E-Class this year, um, the 350 feels a little underpowered compared to the E450. Now with the 450, power figures are in the mid threes and it's a significant difference. So there's nothing wrong with the E350. It's still a very luxurious vehicle, it's a top notch fit and finish here. Um, plenty of available technology as is the case with any vehicles really. But um, out of the box, even without all of the add-ons and the options checked on the option sheet, the E350 is a really solid mid-sized luxury sedan and um, right up there with the 5 Series which is my favorite BMW for that matter um, and the more E-Class vehicles that I spend time with let me get rid of that heat it's, it's a little hot in here um, the more and more I like it I like it that it's subtle luxury it's not very ostentatious luxury which Mercedes does very very well it's you know, a nice clean conservative look on the outside but they really dazzle you with features and benefits and quality of materials and layout like this big massive two-piece um, sorry one piece two screen uh, set out for your infotainment and your dashboard but let's go back to the driving because that's going to be again the focus of the review so it's a little sluggish compared to the 450 and with only 273 pound foot of torque moving a mid-sized sedan you'll still get going whether you go in regular eco sport or sport plus but it just doesn't have the same bite and it doesn't have that same exhilaration when you accelerate with the 350 here now not everybody's going to want a luxury vehicle that is fast and quick and, and dynamic and does zero to 100 in you know three seconds four seconds and i believe what i saw on the mercedes site this morning was it's uh, zero to 106 seconds. I'm a little skeptical of that. Um, it just seems a little on the you know, sluggish side to crack up to that. And I don't do speed tests um, or lap times with any of my vehicles. That's just not my thing. There's plenty of other great Canadian uh, YouTube and uh, writer, YouTube review sites and, and writers and outlets that will focus on that, but uh, that's just not my thing. But if you want the luxury of the E-Class and the power isn't really one of your deciding factors. Um, the E350A is a great way to get into the Mercedes lineup as it's again the entry level for the E-Class and it still has beautiful seats, a beautiful interior. The way it's laid out is so and just very elegant and I know I don't care for the MBUX system. I don't like the touchpad and I hope they get rid of that in the next few years learning curve is steep between that and the uh, thumb pads on the steering wheel eh, not really my favorite thing but it's a great highway cruiser uh, eats up a lot of the bumps really good in, in city conditions as well uh, yes it's a mid-sized sedan so you know take an extra couple of seconds to take a look in your mirrors uh, whenever you're doing any street parking or parking in a parking lot whether it's uh, forwards uh, backwards or parallel parking for that matter. Uh, taking a look on the outside again as I mentioned about Dino maybe two minutes ago it's very conservative uh, great looking rims here the AMG ones um, and a nice clean look for the front end side profile as well as the rear and I've always liked Mercedes for going minimalistic on their body lines and, and dazzling you and really wowing the driver uh, and passengers for that matter uh, with what they put on the inside of the vehicle. So uh, we're using that as a transition to talk about the inside of the vehicle. Um, this one big screen, it's, it's one of my favorites in the industry. Um, it just has this really 
sophisticated look to it, and thankfully it's a touchscreen. So uh, I do this in every one of my reviews as far as uh, a straight touchscreen goes. So my hand is here, and uh, the I know top parts of my fingers touch the uh, the shade that covers it. Now I've got to reach forward a touch to get to the actual touchscreen. So you know, is that maybe a half inch inch, which is fine with me. Uh, I would rather lean forward and do that than try and navigate the the touchpad, which is just, I know I just, I can't do it. I'm overshooting, I'm undershooting. Um, and that's with the pad down here. And it's the same thing with the again, thumb pads on the steering wheel. And I know people have mastered it and people do really well at it. Um, just for all the Mercedes that I've driven this year, not just the E-classes, but every other class, um, I still have a hard time. And maybe it's my problem, right? Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's operator error, um, but the touchscreen itself, uh, high res, easy to get all of your information minimal digging on the menus and it's just it's very intuitive and then taking a look over a bit to the left to the digital dashboard um, beautiful so many things you can do to customize it lots of different options i like using the amg with the yellow for the numbers and having that big speedometer right in the middle there's a bunch of paid options you can get a heads up display you can get the big panoramic sunroof you can get all your safety features you get different kinds of rims uh, and the plus 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 you get the upgraded burmese sound system so with any vehicle luxury or not more leaning towards luxury um, if you want the things uh, you've got to take off a bunch of different options and yeah they're grouped into the packages um, but as far as the interior look and feel goes it is textbook mercedes the seats are so comfortable everything's well within reach um, note that this does not have the vents with the led lights in them it's got four vents across the top uh, but no lights in them I don't know, I, I kind of like it. I don't think everything has to have the exact same layout uh, in the Mercedes lineup. And I kind of like that it doesn't have it. It just gives that, gives that little bit of difference to it. Um, and not everybody's gonna like having the LED lights there. Yeah, it's a cool, uh, it's a cool visual. It looks really nice. You can get the 64 different colors as far as customizing what you want for the interior colors and the ambient lighting. But, you know, I'm, I'm good with it. You get the nice, uh, the open pore wood here. It looks really, really sharp. And I like how they blended the white interior with the blue exterior. Uh, this is that nice open look. And yes, the panoramic sunroof does help in getting even more light into the cabin, but even if it didn't come with a panoramic one and you opted just for the standard sunroof, um, I think it would still let plenty of light into the cabin without any issues at all. Wrapping up with fuel consumption. So on a 66 liter fuel tank, because this is a smaller engine, you'll have uh, different fuel consumption as you would compared to the 450. So with that, in liters per hundred kilometers, we are at 10.7 on city streets, 7.8 on the highway, and a blended total comes out to 9.4, which isn't too bad if you're using this as a daily driver, as more of a cruising vehicle. Um, yes, with the 450, it's gonna be a lot higher because you've got a bigger engine, uh, more power, and that's just gonna eat up fuel. But if you want a mid-sized luxury sedan, and you want the Mercedes badging on there, and you wanna have the E-Class, the 350 is an ideal solution for you because it still has the feel, it's got the looks, it's got the luxurious touches, it's got all the, uh, the fit and finish that you expect out of a Mercedes. You just, you know, a few seconds slower to get to wherever it is you're getting to. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because again, not everybody wants and needs speed. People just sometimes love the simplicity of a luxury vehicle and all that it has to offer. That's going to wrap it up for the 2022 Mercedes E350. If you got any questions on the vehicle, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get you answers as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate the support and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and feel free to tell somebody about the channel who you think might be interested in what it is that I do. Until I see you again as a little Toyota Echo passes me and a Ram 1500 passes me slowly. Be well, be healthy, be safe.